What's going on, man? What's up? And welcome back to another video. First off, I want to start by saying happy 420 to everybody. I hope that you're blowing it down crazy today. And in this video, we got two true dark web horror stories animated. The link for this one is going to be in the description. So make sure y'all check that out if y'all want to watch this for yourselves. And um, if if you enjoy yourself today, put the put the if you enjoy your 420 today, put the little the gas emoji down below in the comments. And let's go ahead and get into this one. Fascination with lost films has always been a peculiar part of me, a badge I wore with odd pride. I watched Citizen Kane, The Godfather 1 and 2, and The Lawrence of Arabia over a weekend as a nine-year-old kid who was sick and feeble and suddenly found an enchanting world in the movies. Over the years, I got my hands on all the old classics, especially the ones made in the golden years of Hollywood. But there was one movie I had only heard whispers it is a movie whore. There on internet forums. Which you just can't get enough of the movies. It's a movie whore. Immediately pulled out. That's how I stumbled upon the dark web listing for The Shadow Beyond, a film rumored to have been lost since its only screening in 1952, a screening that ended in tragedy when the audience was found in a state of inexplicable terror, some even driven to madness. My friend Alex equally Shout out to Alex. And this is the first brother I've seen. To watch it with me, oblivious to the horrors we were about to invite into our lives. We set up the projector in my dimly lit living room, the reels emitting a faint, musty scent that seemed to whisper of forgotten times. As the film crackled to life, we were greeted with scenes that seemed mundane at first shadowy figures lurking in alleyways, a procession of faceless people marching through a fog-shrouded city. But there was something unnervingly hypnotic about the way these figures moved. All right, let me lock in, let me lock in. I'm locked. More than mere projections of light and Look shadow. at them. It's just a bunch of They look loaded watching these Alex movies. tried to laugh it off, but his voice wavered, betraying his unease. We've seen modern horror movies, this would pale in comparison. Right. As the film progressed, the imagery grew more disturbing. Scenes of indescribable rites and grotesque figures twisted in agony flickered before us, their silent screams echoing in our minds. It was then that we noticed the air around us had grown cold. I had a projector, bro. The in the room I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest it. Closer, as if drawn it's not as cool as you think images. it is. Charlie? Do you feel that? Alex's voice was a mere whisper, his eyes fixed on the shifting shadows that seemed to dance at the edge of our vision. I could only nod, my throat tight with fear. The film had cast a spell over us. Hey man, I just I also I also want to say this. Why why is it not pausing? But I feel like if there is more than one male in the area, that you should never be scared. Not, not, not saying that like males aren't scary people or anything, but I'm saying like, like in situations like this, in situations where you feel like something weird is going on, I feel like if you're a male around at least one other male, there's like literally no reason to be scared. Like, especially if there's multiple males, bro. If you're scared, I don't know. You need to go hang out with the ladies. It's not, it's not for you, you know? Curiosity. That insatiable human flaw kept us rooted. That adrenaline should kick in by then. Glued to the screen. That night, after Alex and all your testosterone should come through began, bursting, Chip. Should never be scared. It was just the after effects of the film, my imagination running wild. But the shadows in my home seemed to move of their own accord, stretching and twisting into grotesque shapes that defied the laws of physics. Right. Whispers filled the air. Voices that seemed to come. Whisper from back, nigga. Put up a fight. Speaking in a language I couldn't understand. Yet Speak gibberish, niggas. Fight back. Inexplicable dread. I barely slept. The few moments of I'd whisper gibber gibberish right back to them niggas. Too vivid. I'd bet they get annoyed at my shit and just leave. Film replayed over and over, but each time something. Being that bit like this. <laughs> niggas gonna leave instantly. The next day, I called Alex, desperate for some semblance of normalcy. 
hoping he would tell me it was all in my head, but he didn't answer. When I finally reached him later that afternoon, his voice was strange. Get under, he's terrified. Yeah, he eyes are shaking. Charles, something's wrong. I saw one of them today, in the daylight. It was watching me from across the street, just standing there in the shadows. I blinked, and it was gone. Right. But I know what I saw. His words sent a shiver down my spine. I had hoped what I experienced was a product of my own imagination, but Alex's encounter confirmed our shared nightmare was far from over. The days that followed were a descent into a nightmare we couldn't wake from. Alex and I tried to rationalize our experience. I might as well just have a sleepover, right? Explanation for the shadows Fight the demons to together. Us, for the whispers that filled our ears with dread. But deep down, we knew we had tapped into something ancient, something evil, through the shadow beyond. One evening, as I sat alone trying to drown out the this whispers is, with blaring music, funk? I noticed a figure standing just outside my window. It was cloaked in shadows, its form barely distinguishable, but its presence was unmistakable. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest, as I slowly raised a hand and pressed it against the glass. There was no sound, but the message was clear. I was not alone. Alex, it's getting worse. I confessed over the phone, my voice shaking. He was outside my house tonight. I don't know what to do. We have Fight to back, nigga. More about the film. Alex replied, a determined edge to his voice. Sorry if y'all hear that. Reason why this is fucking plane is going over my house right now. It. And apparently that bitch is directly over my roof, like two feet from it, I guess. Internet, an old film archives Loud ass playing. Of the shadow beyond. Shout out Spider-Man. Led us to an obscure film historian. Shout out Godfather. Paper on lost films, including ours. He agreed to speak with us. His curiosity piqued by our desperation. The historian, a gaunt man with eyes that had seen too much. Listen to our story. With Why is he so expression. big? Is this nigga a giant? He sighed. Nigga is huge. You're not the first to experience this. He began, his voice solemn. The film was created by a cult in the early 50s, designed as a ritual to breach the veil between our worlds and the shadow realm. They believed they could control the shadows, use them for their own ends. But they were wrong. The shadows cannot be controlled, only unleashed. His words were a cold splash of reality. We had unleashed something we had no And look at them. Control. They heard that and lost their shit. What can we do? Alex asked, desperation creeping. Should have gave you the fate. The historian shook his head slowly. The original reel was supposed to contain a ritual for sealing the breach. But it was lost before it could be used. Without it, I'm afraid there may be no way to close the door you've opened. That Might as well to charge it to the game, older, brothers. More aggressive. Whispers turned to screams. The darkness alive with malevolent intent. Alex and I I've said this before, bro, but the whole point of like a spear, right, is to incite fear. Basically, to make the the whoever they're trying to hunt right like kind of lose their shit so that, so that you know they can do whatever they do because the more you lose their your shit the more power they have over you and whatnot so if you're just not scared like like i understand like the whispers and shadows but like if you take it right take it as what it is and like you just go on about your day and like don't let the shit bother you does the shit continue to go on and like have power because you're not scared of that shit? You get what I'm saying? But I, I don't know how, how spirits and stuff work. I've never seen one. From the flickering candles. And I doubt one wants to see me because I'll beat its ass. So the walls. We have to go back. I said the realization dawning on me. We have to watch the film again. There has to be something we missed. Some clue on how to end this. Alex nodded, his face pale but resolute. We prepared the niggas black, his face doesn't get pale. Survive the encounter, but knowing we had no other choice. 
The projector hummed to life, the opening scenes of the shadow beyond flickering onto the wall. We watched, our eyes scouring each frame for something Percocet, want one? Anything that might uh, save us. You don't say Percocet? But as the film reached its climax, something strange happened. The shadowy creature, which was featured in it, lifted a lamp and attacked the hero the first time that we watched it. But this time, it stopped in its tracks, turned, and it seemed like he looked at us. He's breaking the fourth wall? The room chilled to an unearthly cold. And in a second, the creature leapt towards us, jumping out of the screen in the oh. real world. We screamed, but before it could reach us, we suddenly felt our blood pressure drop. And we passed out. Scary ass niggas. When I woke up, everything was normal, but the real automatically burnt off. The horror stopped that day, but what me and Alex saw that night, I wouldn't wish it upon. They released the, the demon into the world, Jit. He left y'all alone. He spared them boys because them boys set him free. I can respect that. The dark web. My friend Jamie and I, armed with nothing but our curiosity and a newly acquired dubious guide to the hidden corners of the internet, we stumbled upon a form that seemed harmless at first. A place where people shared secrets, unsolved mysteries, and the occasional conspiracy theory. It was exhilarating, feeling like we had uncovered a hidden world. Until we received a private message from a user known only as Watcher. Watcher claimed they had been observing us, noting our keen interest in the dark web secrets. Yeah, me the fucked up. Was I would have burned my PC instantly off that blood. shit. How did you know I was doing that? Files containing our personal information. Them bitch clicked that shit. Conversations we had in private, and details no stranger should know. The message was clear: we were being blackmailed. The first task seemed almost laughable. Walk into a crowded supermarket and scream a conspiracy theory at the top of your. You got me house. fucked up. Leak that I'm shit, yeah. Sure, but I don't got no secrets. We thought complying might end this nightmare, so we did it, recording the act as proof. This market is built on a graveyard. You're walking on ancient warlands. Jamie yelled. I'm ancient like, jewels are buried literally could not we care if the nigga told me to do this. I have no secrets that you could expose. Only thing that you could expose if you drop a picture of me naked on the internet, and I wouldn't even care. Well done. I would have told the nigga to do it. As days passed, the tasks grew increasingly bizarre. One. And they doing it like some like they his bitches. Makeup. Attend a local high school football game and cheer for the team in complete. That's silence. crazy, bro. He's doing this shit like some bitches. Contact with the camera we were instructed to set up across the field. The video, once sent to the watcher, was met with approval and the promise of escalation. We wanted to quit, but we were reminded of our sensitive information once again. We have to come out, I said. Holding Jamie's hand. Oh, there. But he pulled back. Can I say that? I can't say that on YouTube, can I? Knew his reality. That's what secrets they're talking the about. One was something bro, just just be yourself, bro. We were to break into the local animal shelter. Fuck this nigga. Night, just be happy in public. And release the dogs while live streaming the entire act. The task was not only weird, but illegal. The sensitive information hung over us like a sword, compelling us to comply. We executed the task. Whatever sensitive information it is cannot be Each worth jail time. Was a step further and I'm pretty the sure it's just them the coming out the closet. The madness we couldn't escape. The blackmail was relentless. Watchers grip on us tightening with each completed task. We were pawns in a sadistic game, our lives spiraling out of control. Jamie and I spent countless nights debating our next move, searching for a way out. But Watcher was always one step ahead. The tasks, each more demanding and dangerous than the last, were breaking us down, tearing at the fabric of our friendship. The final task arrived like a death sentence. Jump off your building at midnight, stream it. Do this, and you're free. Nigga said, kill yourself and you're free. No the fucking duh, buddy. Danger of the request paralyzed. Cause I'm gonna die. This was no longer about humiliation, like brother. breaking the law. It was a matter of life and death. I remember sitting with Jamie in silence, the weight of our situation crushing. It was then 
in the depths of despair that a spark of defiance ignited within me. Oh, fucking time. Be a man. I wouldn't let the Watcher win. I proposed a plan to call Watcher's Bluff to confront this monster head on and reclaim our lives. Jamie was hesitant, the fear palpable in his eyes, but eventually he nodded in agreement. We were in this together, for better or worse. The night was pitch black as we approached the terrace, the cold air biting at our skin. We set up the live stream as demanded, but instead of complying, I turned the camera to face us and spoke directly to the Watcher. We are done with this. You want to tell the world our reality? So be it. We'd rather face our parents' disappointment than jump to our deaths, you psycho. The silence that followed was deafening, a moment suspended in time where everything hung in the balance. Then, a message. Impressive. You're free to go. Relief washed over us, a feeling so intense it was almost euphoric. In the days that followed, peace enveloped our lives. The absence of Watcher's menacing presence felt like emerging from a long, oppressive shadow. Right. But the peace was deceptive. In the wake of our rebellion, a haunting silence took hold. Jamie became distant, his once vibrant demeanor shadowed by something I couldn't decipher. Our conversations grew sporadic, filled with unspoken fears. And oh, I thought he just the past. It is, but I attributed his change to the ordeal we had endured, confident that time would heal the scars left by our encounter with Watcher. Then, one evening, I received a call that would shatter the fragile he jumped off the building. Of normalcy we had clung to. It was Jamie's mother. Her voice cracked with emotion, informing me that Jamie had jumped off the building. I know it. His final act was broadcasted to an unknown audience. The world around me came to a screeching halt, reality fracturing into a million pieces. I raced down the stairs, refusing to believe what I had heard, only to be met by the flashing lights of police cars and a crowd of onlookers. The truth was undeniable. A crushing weight that threatened to suffocate me. Jamie had jumped. His decision a mystery wrapped in the enigma of our shared nightmare. He probably had more and dirt than you did, brother. Consumed by guilt and confusion. You know what happened? That other other buddy, he had way more shit that he didn't want to come into light than this nigga Jamie did. Jamie was cool with his secrets. He was like, you know what, bro? I'm really just hiding this shit because I'm scared of what people will think of me. But fuck that. I want to be happy. This other nigga, he got some shit for real. That nigga, he, he'd, he'd rather take his shit to grave than have his shit come to light. He got some shit for real. Whatever he had, whatever that watcher nigga had on him, he had it. Because, boy... Anything, anything that you can put your life before is crazy. Your life, nothing should come before your life. Besides, like, you know, your family or whatever, when you get to that point. But found nothing. The absence of answers was a torment all on its own. The realization but honestly, nothing should come before your own life, if you ask me. defiance on the bridge had been a facade, a moment of bravery that masked a deeper, more insidious despair. Jamie had been pushed beyond his limits. I failed to see the signs, too caught up in my own relief to notice the cracks forming in my friend's resolve. As I grappled with the aftermath of Jamie's death, a chilling discovery was made. The police informed me that the live stream of Jamie's jump had been traced back to a server associated with Watcher. But when they raided the place, they found a Chinese family living there who were illegal immigrants. Jamie's jump, whether a desperate bid Probably for their son a just final act of defiance, had been part of Watcher's game all along. Literally, long. probably just a teenager bullshitting around. Despair. And it got and way too far. After the funeral, I got a message from an unknown number. Congrats, you passed the experiment. Who is this? You know who. Why did you do it? I didn't. He did it himself. This was the seventh experiment. Seven couples preferred dying over letting their secrets come out. Except for you. You stood up. 
That's a specimen who should live. Courageous. Who the hell are you? Why are you doing this? I just watch. Watch how my subjects play the game once I give them the push. You're a psycho. I know. You want to know what his last words were? What? What? Tell me now! He will be waiting for you to join him. In the end, the truth of what- Man, that weak ass shit. I'm finna, I'm finna stop this story. That shit weak. If y'all enjoyed this one, I hope that y'all enjoyed this one. If y'all did, leave a little like, comment, subscribe, share, all of that good stuff. And peace, love, and positivity, and I will catch y'all in the next one, man. It's two options in this world. Is you gonna win or lose? Is you gonna take the risk or not? You know you gotta choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.